Hey, Dr. Brunt. Hey, yes, sir. In really intense situations in games, how do you encourage athletes, especially at a professional level, to sort of come back to the moment and communicate properly with their teammates instead of just going full barbarian on them? Yeah, well, so, you know, look, if they're, you know, on the bench or something, right, they have an opportunity to work on their breathing before they communicate. Four or five seconds in, four or five second hold, four or five second release, four or five second hold, basic box breathing, or just slowing it down and working on their breath in general, get them a little more patient, a little bit more poised. It's a better way to communicate, right? You're from a better place to start with. So you wanna work on you first, and then from there the communication flows. And then I'm teaching everybody how to communicate without the you are's, right? You're teaching everybody, you know, uh, seems like, sounds like, feels like certain techniques that have a lot of value. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. How can athletes maintain that laser sharp focus, that high level of intensity, and still have a fun life? Yeah, so that's part of the intention, right, is to make it fun along the way. And people lose that, not just athletes, but higher level athletes in particular, there's much more pressure, right? And so if they're not careful, they're not mindful, then they will lose some of the fun along the way. I'm a, I'm a sounding board and a reminder in part for making the process more fun. Meditative states help a lot as well. I always talk about this because when you go into those deeper meditative states, it gives you more perspective, right? That this thing is fleeting, it's fast, this journey called life, and your time as a pro athlete is gonna be fast. So you wanna enjoy it before the end of your career. Mm. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. What are some common issues you see with pro athletes more so than you see with, like, college or, you know, younger it's athletes? Just, well, now it's changing, you know, because some of the college athletes can, you know, get sponsorships and money and so on. But, you know, with the pros, the contracts are issues, right? So it gets a little complicated with agents and contracts and just making sure that you're taking care of yourself that way, negotiating those things. Hmm. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. If a... Athlete feels like his career is sort of plateauing. How do you help them sort of get through that? Well, plateauing can be, it can occur anywhere, you know, and so I like to help people like change their states, you know, revitalize their energy. So breath work, meditation, you know, most of these athletes are exercising really well, but their relationships can affect their level of proactivity and their plateauing nature, right? Meaning, like you can get to a place where if you're eating poorly or drinking too much or partying too much or just not really paying attention to your energy level at the next level, then you're going to plateau. So really it's about enhancing your focus and enhancing your energy field. Jeez. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. What would you tell a kid who has it? You know, they have the talent, they have the, the, the looks, they have it all, but they don't quite have the mental game yet and they think they don't need a sports psychologist. If they think they don't need a sports psychologist, they'll find out at some point they might need one, right? I mean, look, I, I'm coaching a pro tennis player now, and like his parents, you know, got him started with me um, maybe like nine months ago or something or six months ago. It took three or four months for him to fully embrace my philosophy and what we're up to and to embrace the mental game. And now he gets it. So sometimes it takes a little while to, that's the art of my end of the equation is to, kind of motivate them to understand, you know, how and why this is so important. If they're not ready, they're not ready. So some, some kids just aren't going to be ready. And that's okay. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. Aside from, like, physical skills, what mental, what mental skills do, what mental skills separate good athletes from great athletes? Mostly in what I call enhanced focus, the ability to hone in and focus intensely and yet not overly intensely, like it's like an intense, relaxed focus, it's paradoxical, but the ability to hone in and drop in the zone, and that is unique to top athletes and to people that train their minds. Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, yes. Sir. Games aren't actually long. How do you encourage athletes to get right back into the moment? Well, that's part of your journey off the field for on the field and vice versa. Everywhere you go, you're training your mind. So. We're bringing our focus back into the moment by breathing, observing, and or communicating. This kind of process is something that we're doing everywhere in life. You go on a date, you're training your mind, right? You're having a conversation with your mom, you're training your mind. So wherever you go, I'm inviting people to train their freaking mind. So when they're on the field, it's just easier. 
Hey, Dr. Brett. Hey, Ashley. How do you teach athletes to become more disciplined and balanced about their eating without being obsessive and disordered about it? Yeah, and that's a process and a journey, Ashley. It's not something that happens overnight, but you're gradually replacing garbage with less garbage and eventually making healthier and healthier choices. As you do that, your focus will be enhanced. As your focus gets enhanced, it's reinforcing. So as your habits get better and better and better, you're going to enjoy yourself more.